Thank you very much, Bill. A humble Jesuit, an oxymoron. A Jesuit pope, an impossibility. A humble Jesuit pope, a miracle. Now, My sisters and brothers, let us be honest. We have witnessed history in the making. The election of Pope Francis, the first non-European pope in many centuries, the first pope elected from the Americas, and of course the first Jesuit pope, and a pope elected in a conclave that could be called the most cosmopolitan gathering in the history of the church, with the exception of a ride on the D train during rush hour. Now, in the days that have uh, gone by since his election, I've been flooded with emails. And these emails have asked me all sorts of questions, but three stand out, both for their frequency and really for their pointedness. The first, how do I react to his election? Second, is he really as humble and kind and playful as he seems to be in the press? And third, is it really appropriate for us to gather at the Waldorf on the eve of his inaugural Eucharist of ministry to the Universal Church. Isn't that somehow uh, disrespectful? With regard to the first, my answer is quite simply this. Like every other Jesuit in the world, I was stunned by his election. Thrilled, but stunned nonetheless. With regard to the second, is he really as humble and kind and playful as he appears to be. Let me answer that by sharing with you a story that has delighted Jesuits throughout the world for most of the past few days. Immediately after Francis was elected, our Father General wrote to him a letter of congratulations. The very next morning, the phone rang at the Jesuit Curia at 10.15. And the man on the front door picked up the phone, and on the other end of the line, he heard a soft, serene voice saying, Good morning. This is Pope Francis. I would like to speak with Father General. The man at the front door, used to dealing with quacks, <laughs> said he wanted to respond, Oh yeah, and I'm Napoleon. But he resisted the temptation. And so he said, rather curtly, who may I say is calling? The Pope, realizing that the young man at the front door didn't believe him, said, it's really Pope Francis. And what is your name? Ah, uh, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, may I speak with Father General? Uh, of course. At which point he handed the phone to the general's personal secretary, Brother Alfonso, without telling him who was on the other end. <laughs> Alfonso picks up the phone and says, hello? And the pope says, to whom am I speaking? This is Brother Alfonso, Father General's personal secretary. And who is this? This is Pope Francis. I am calling just to thank Father General for the wonderful letter that he sent to me. Alfonso, completely bewildered, completely flummoxed by this, says, of course, just a moment. Just a moment to the Pope. <laughs> and he takes the cell phone and starts running up to the General's uh, office. And on the way, of course, he has to fill the time. And so he says, oh, Your Holiness, we are all of us delighted with the news of your election, and we are praying for you a lot. <laughs> to which the Pope responds, are you praying that I stay or that I go back to Argentina? <laughs> to which Alfonso says, oh, to stay, of course, Holy Father. At which point he reaches the general's office and without knocking bursts in, the general is caught off guard, looks at him, stunned and bewildered, and Alfonso hands the phone to him and says, the Pope. <laughs> and so, my friends, the answer to the question, is he as humble and as playful as he appears to be? 
Absolutely. Thanks be to God. I still don't want him to know my name. <laughs> With regard to the third question, whether or not it's appropriate right for us to gather here in the grand ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria in the capital of the world on the night before the Eucharist that will be celebrated to inaugurate his pastoral ministry to the whole church and to the entire world. Is it appropriate? Well, I believe it's altogether appropriate that we do this. Why? Well, you see, I'm a son of St. Ignatius, and Ignatius never tired of saying to his sons, Age quaragis, do what you are doing. And as a son of Ignatius, I do what I am doing, and I think it's appropriate that we together do this tonight, that we agimus quad agimus, that we do what we do. But why? Well, because, my friends, let us be honest, this night we're not about frivolity. We have told tales and stories, to be sure. We have toasted one another, and we have joked with one another. But if we are honest with one another, we would have to admit that we are about something special, very special here. Tonight we gather not just for a dinner. Tonight we gather to celebrate, to celebrate the mission of the university and three people who have lived lives that have been devoted to and inspired by the mission of the university and who have done this in spectacular ways. But you see, I do believe that Jerry, John, and Patty have lived out the mission of the university in spectacular ways. They have lived lives that are marked by competence, conscience, compassion, and deep commitment to the cause of justice and charity. And wonderfully, because of the way in which they have lived their lives, they have transformed the world, and they have transformed Fordham. And also, wonderfully, they have done this precisely because in their own lives, whether they knew it or not, they heeded the advice of Ignatius, age quad agis, do what you do. Because you see, they have transformed the world in and through the actions of their everyday lives and the accomplishments of their everyday lives. They have transformed the world. Now, while I praise, and I think rightly praise, Jerry, John, and Patty, we do not celebrate them alone. Tonight, with them and through them, we celebrate the mission, the sacred mission of the entire university. Therefore, tonight, my friends, what exactly do we really celebrate? Tonight, we celebrate the fact that last year, 4,600 of our undergraduates devoted more than a million hours to community service. Tonight, we celebrate the fact that many... <laughs> tonight, we celebrate the fact that many of our students chose to spend their spring breaks doing global outreach projects rather than sunning themselves in the Caribbean. Tonight we celebrate the work that is done by our law school and social service school clinicians to relieve the poverty of the citizens of our city. Tonight we celebrate the fact that the graduates of the Graduate School of Education refuse to give up on the students in the inner city of New York. Tonight, we celebrate the fact that the faculty of the Graduate School of Religion and Religious Ed works day and night to figure out ways to celebrate grace in the lives and minds and hearts of young people. Tonight, we celebrate the fact that our faculty work tirelessly and creatively to open the eyes, the minds, the hearts of our students so that they might do what all Fordham graduates do, live lives that are marked by restless, creative, insistent service of the human family. And for my part tonight, what do I do? Heeding the uh, admonition of Ignatius to agis, age quad agis, tonight I must be honest with you and say to all of you, tonight I celebrate, praise, magnify, glorify, and pray for all of you. For you see, I see you in my dreams, I see you in my prayers. I carry your names and your faces in my heart. And my heart rejoices whenever one of your faces or one of your names presents itself to me so that I could pray more earnestly in thanksgiving for all that you do. 
And so, my sisters and brothers, my dear friends, what do we do tonight? Agimus quod agimus. We do what we do. We celebrate the election of Francis precisely by doing what we do, doing it well, doing with heart, and doing it with great heart for the transformation of the world. This is sacred work that we are about. Now, to be sure, outsiders who are non-rams, <laughs> graduates, say, of Boston College, <laughs> or Notre Dame, like all the Seminos, God save them all. <laughs> to outsiders, it might seem that what we're about tonight is merely a little bit of self-congratulation. Far worse, it may seem to outsiders that we had for to merely celebrate the non-heroic and the mundane. But they would be wrong. I say it again, they would be wrong. For tonight, my friends, we don't celebrate the mundane and the non-heroic. Tonight, we celebrate true heroes. Tonight, we celebrate sacred work. Tonight, we celebrate the transformation of the world, one heart, one soul, one student, one graduate at a time. Tonight, my friends, we celebrate agimus quat agimus. We do what we do, but we do it differently. Agimus quat agimus ad maiorem dei gloriam. We at Fordham do what we do for the greater glory of God for the transformation of the world that God called into being out of love and that he seeks to transform every day out of continuing redeeming love. This, my friends, is a way to celebrate the election of Francis, a surprise pope who seeks to transform the world. And so what do I say to all of you this night? I say quite simply this, age quad agis. Do what you do. Do it well. Do it with heart. Do it with discerning love for the greater glory of God. And if you do, you will truly be sons and daughters of Fordham and even more, sons and daughters of Ignatius. God bless you all and our great university. <laughs>